Three weeks ago, an old friend of mine contacted me to work on a university project for his dissertation. This is the finished result, so sit back, relax, enjoy, and I will see you shortly. Back in 2015, I, I, I seen a mini for sale on Facebook. It was it was up for around £1,500 and it was too much for what was asking, but it was two miles down the road from where I actually lived. So I got in touch and I went to see the, the, the lady and I, asked, I made her a silly offer. Um, I got laughed at and then we met in the middle and I ended up buying the car for £900 and as soon as I started stripping it, it was evident why it was £900. There was just filler, paper mache everywhere. The actual cross member was cut and siliconed back together, so there was no strength in the car going across. The roof had crumpled and cracked the windscreen because um, she drove it into the back of a wagon. So I literally had to get this car sorted and I was working away at the time. Um, so I stripped the car. On my weekends, it was literally all go, no, no, no stop. Just coming home on a Friday from London and doing the car at weekend and going back on Sunday. And the the biggest thing that I'd say the biggest task was because the roof was ruined. You, you can't buy a roof panel for a minute, but you, you can buy the the inlay of the roof, but you can't buy the pillars and the edges. So I drove down to Essex to buy this mini off someone. Didn't tell him what I wanted, and I got a reciprocating saw out and cut the roof off in front of him, and he was disgusted with me. Um, but that was all I needed, and I threw it in the back of the van and got a scrap metal man to pick the rest of the car up. Drove it home, and then it was a case of bracing all the car to chop the original roof off, put a new one on, and make sure all the windows would seal, because otherwise they'd leak. And that that was the pain of it. In terms of the interior, I've always been a lover of Singer Porsche vehicles, um, Singer vehicle design. If people don't know it, they've took a nine, uh, a Porsche 911, one of the older ones, and just totally revamped the car um, and put their own touch on it. Bigger fenders, just stunning interior. And I took a lot of inspiration from that, and I thought, well, I've got a mini here that I'm doing up, and the interior standard is, is awful, in my opinion. And I've always loved tan interior, and I know it's an acquired taste. And just, I've seen a single Porsche, and I've seen a Bentley Continental, and I love the diamond stitch in a Bentley. So one day I just sat down with a piece of paper and I drew the shape of a mini seat. It was probably an awful drawing, in my opinion. Um, and I drew the stitch lines that I wanted. And then I got in touch with a guy in Stafford. Um, he goes by a company name, Optimize Automotive. And we agreed to work together in the fact that I'd produce a video on how my interior was made um, in exchange for a discount. Anyway, we got to a number and we worked it out. And it was more of a case of building the interior and getting it right to go in a red car. And a lot of people doubted the tan interior and thought, no, it's, it's not gonna look right. But just part of me in my head thought, no, I need to do something different. It needs to be my own touch. If I do the carpets black and the roof black, the tan interior will look fine. The second time I went down to, to discuss the design, he said to me, he said, it's just missing something, Tom. And I said, I know, I've, I've, I've realized what, what it's missing. And again, taking inspiration from seeing a vehicle design, I sketched out my signature on a piece of paper and I said, I want that on the headrest. And he was like, what makes you want that? And I said, the fact is, this is the first car I've ever built. It's I've self-taught and I wanted to make sure that I signed my signature on that car to say that I'm happy with it, I've built it. I went to pick it up, I had a, a, like a sickness feeling in my stomach because I thought, oh, it's, it's, not, it's not turned out like how I wanted it, it's, uh, it's not gonna work. Anyway, we got the, got the interior home. The next day, sunny day, interior started going in the car and I just instantly thought this decision was right, it, everyone's gonna love it. I did everyone that's seen them in it has said the interior is just absolutely stunning and it's sometimes things that don't look right or sound right in your head you just have to do it and just have a go and it just comes out perfect i think and uh, it's perfect to me it's not perfect to a lot of people but it's my car it's perfect in every way to me and that's that's, that's all that really matters really in the, in the car community i think once it had come back from the sprayers it was just a case of throwing it all back together and taking time really and putting nice shiny bits on and i'd say that was probably the most therapeutic part of it just putting everything back together and just seeing this rust bucket come back to a, its former glory and just putting my own little touch on it at the time when you first turn the key and you're scratching your head and you're not understanding why the engine's not going and with it being a car that's based on a 1960s design or a 1950s design even um, it's simplicity and it can only be down to fuel spark and air ignition and uh, air basically and we messed around for a couple of hours and then it just sprung to life and just idled perfect at uh, about 750 revs and 
ever since then I've just been driving it in the summer. It's been it's been bang on really, and I, I won't change it to be fair. If you're wondering why I'm grinning, it is simply because you don't realise what you've achieved until somebody throws it in your face and shows you the journey in a snippet. Now obviously I've been part of this journey from day one for the past two and a half years doing this car, doing the videos, but because I've been so caught up in that, I've not realised what I've actually done. And I don't want to sound smug, but I do feel proud of myself after watching that video. People say it to me all the time, you must be proud, and I just sort of go, yeah, yeah, I am, and not really take in what they're actually saying, but now I understand it when people say, you must be proud. One person that should be proud of themselves is Shaft, that's done this video. Mate, that was fantastic. That is TV sort of storyline quality, that. That could be on the TV, and that's not just to blow me on bubble, but the way it was edited, the structure. That interview was actually 40 minutes long, and it was shrunk down to what it was. I want to ask a favour of you guys now. Shaf is going to get marks on this for his degree at university. It's his final year and this is the final grade that he needs to get a job in media. Part of his degree is that he gets marks on the feedback that he receives from this film and he has to send screenshots of what the feedback is and send it into the invigilators. So could you guys please leave your honest feedback in the description, bearing in mind that this is going to help him out with his degree and to obtain his dream job. The second thing is, please go and give him some love on Instagram. His name is Shaf underscore Islam. Go and follow him on there for other car content. He is going to be boosting that this year. You've done yourself proud and I want to thank you for spending all the time with me and Alex doing this. The reason I mention Alex is the there's a second part to this Built Not Bought series and Alex has done something with Shaft for another part of his degree and that is getting released next Thursday at 8pm. So if you're around, give that a watch and again, drop your feedback because it does help Shaft with his grade. The last two things or three things that I want to say is I am going to be at Bingley Hall in a couple of weeks. The Mini is on the red carpet on the BMC stand. Hopefully you guys can come and say hello and look at the car in the flesh and pick as many holes as you want in it because if you pick holes in it, I can then perfect it even more. The second thing is t-shirts are dropping next week. If you're on my Instagram, comment which one you want. I am going to be picking one person at random to receive their order of their choice entirely free. The third thing is the final episode of the Mini is going to come out and we're not sure when, but me and Shaf have had a few meetings over Christmas and had a chat of structure of how we're going to capture the shots and make it look really cinematic and go through the structure of how we're going to reveal the mini totally finished. So you will see it at Bingley Hall, but the film is going to follow later in this year when the weather does get better. But Shaf and Joes that helped film this episode are going to be helping me with that to get a true TCR production. Because 2019 is the year I want to smash. I want this channel to grow. I want the community to grow. And one day, you will be going to an event called the TCR Weekender, hopefully. And that is the plan, not for money, just for fun, for car culture and car community reasons, because I am obsessed with cars, as I'm sure many of you are, and I would love to actually host a meetup. I've rambled on enough. I hope you stay with us and join us next Thursday for the episode with Alex. And then after that, it's back to the Clubman and just smashing on with it. And there'll be a Bingley Hall episode as well. But for now, guys, stay safe. Drop your feedback below and I'll see you in the next one.